लाइफ एक्सपेक्टेंसी इज नॉट जस्ट अ हेल्थ स्टैटिस्टिक इट्स द फाइनल वर्डिंग द आउटकम ऑफ एवरीथिंग एल्स एजुकेशन इनकम न्यूट्रिशन पब्लिक हेल्थ सैनिटेशन वुमेन्स एम्पावरमेंट एंड गवर्नेंस लाइफ एक्सपेक्टेंसी इट्स द पिनाकल मेट्रिक सो द रियल क्वेश्चन इज वॉट इज साउथ इंडिया डूइंग राइट बिकॉज दिस इज इंट अबाउट जेनेटिक्स इट इज अबाउट पॉलिसी कल्चर एंड लिव्ड रियालिटी बिकॉज एजुकेटेड वुमेन सीक हेल्थ केयर दे एंश्योर इम्यूनाइजेशन दे अंडरस्टैंड न्यूट्रिशन एंड इन्वेस्ट इन देर फैमिलीज वेल बींग दिस इज इंट ओपिनियन it's hard data where women are empowered entire societies live longer longevity doesn't come from luck it comes you can lie about development you can fake headlines and slogans but you can't fake how long your people live south indian numbers prove that when you invest in education when you invest in healthcare when you invest in equality and the nutrition your people reward you with time do your policies add years to people's lives or take them away from you because in the end a longer better life is the one thing everyone wants and south india is quietly showing the rest of the country how it's done if you want to know how developed a society truly is don't look at its gdp don't look at its highways look at how long its people live and how well they live life expectancy is not just a health statistic it's the final verdict the outcome of everything else education income nutrition public health sanitation human empowerment and governance life expectancy it's the pinnacle metric and when you look at india's life expectancy numbers one thing becomes crystal clear that south india leads and it's not even close let's look at the latest life expectancy at birth figures 2024 kerala they live up to 78.2 years number 1 in india puducherry 77.8 Tamil Nadu 75.18 Karnataka 74.47 Telangana they live up to 73.8 years all india average is 72 now compare that the lowest performing states chhattisgarh 65 years uttar pradesh 66 years madhya pradesh 67 years assam 66 years that's a difference of 10 to 12 years between someone born in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Pondicherry and someone born in Chhattisgarh, UP. A whole decade of life. That's not a gap. That's a generational divide. So the real question is, what is South India doing right? Because this isn't about genetics. It is about policy, culture and lived reality. Let's break it down. Number 1 quality of life that's actually lived south indian states consistently rank higher on quality of life indices a 2017 global nambio study found that five of the top 11 indian cities for quality of life were from south india mangaluru ranked 48th globally and second in asia Cities like Hyderabad, Bengaluru and Coimbatore weren't far behind. Why? Because of better sanitation, better housing and more reliable electricity. Efficient public transport, access to clean water and overall urban infrastructure that works. And it's not just cities, even household level studies show a clear north south divide. districts in kerala tamil nadu andhra pradesh and karnataka showed very high scores 
in housing sanitation, communication, assert ownership, health care access, a child born in these households is simply born into more opportunity. Number two, the diet of longevity. It begins with the food. South Indian diets are rich in fermented foods like Italy, dosa and apple. Fermentation introduces probiotics, great for digestion, immunity and even mental health. Spices like turmeric, ginger, cumin and pepper are not just flavor, they are anti-inflammatory. Antioxidant rich compounds that protect against chronic diseases. And then there is coconut, often debated but now proven to have healthy fats like MCTs that boost metabolism and energy. This isn't a trend. This is thousands of years of culinary science served hot every morning across the south. And the third point, education, especially for women. Literacy is one of the strongest predictors of life expectancy. Kerala has over 95% literacy and that's why they are number one in life expectancy. Tamil Nadu and Karnataka are not far behind. Importantly, female literacy in the south is significantly higher than many North Indian states. Why does this matter? Because educated women seek health care. They ensure immunizations. They understand nutrition and invest in their family's well-being. This isn't opinion. It's hard data. Where women are empowered, entire societies live longer. And the fourth point, higher incomes and better living conditions. Per capita income in South Indian states is far above the national average. Tamil Nadu, 1.96 lakh. Kerala, 2.1 lakh. Karnataka and Telangana, well above 1.5 lakh. National average is 1.1 lakh. Uttar Pradesh is at 71,000. We are not just talking about state GDPs. We are talking about actual earnings at the household level. Better income is equivalent to better housing, better food, better education and better health care. Longevity doesn't come from luck. It comes from living with dignity. The fifth point, health systems that work. Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka all have built strong primary health care systems over decades. More doctors, more PHCs, better maternal care, quicker response times and widespread access to public health insurance schemes. In Tamil Nadu, for instance, the CM health insurance scheme has, a, has been a game changer. While the rest of India was figuring out Aishman Bharat, these states had already laid the foundation. The sixth point, social cohesion, less violence, more stability. South India generally has lower crime rates, fewer communal clashes and greater gender safety in public spaces. This might sound soft, but peace, stability and community bonds play a massive role in mental health and life satisfaction. You don't just live longer, you live better. So why does this matter? Why should India care? Because life expectancy is the final exam. You can lie about development. You can fake headlines and slogans, but you can't fake how long your people live. South Indian numbers prove that when you invest in education, when you invest in healthcare, when you invest in equality and nutrition, your people reward you with time. Let's stop calling this just a South versus North comparison. This is not about geography. This is clearly about governance. It's about asking the right question. Do your policies add years to people's lives or take them away from them? Because in the end, a longer, better life 
is the one thing everyone wants and South India is quietly showing the rest of the country how it's done. A longer life isn't luck. A longer life is the policy. Thank you for watching.